The following is a production of Learfield Sports. The Wisconsin Badgers closed out the regular season last weekend at Minnesota, winning a bizarre 4-3 decision on Friday before a 4-1 setback on Saturday, where the Gophers had six straight power plays at one point. The Badgers 8-18-8 as they head into the Big Ten Tournament in St. Paul. They'll play in one of the greatest hockey buildings in the world, the XL Energy Center. Junior forward Grant Bessie has won a pair of championships at the X back in high school and a Big Ten tournament title a couple of years ago. And he remembers the first time he walked into the XL. The first game I ever went to actually was uh, they were playing the Calgary Flames. And I remember one distinct moment. Me and my dad were sitting up in like the cheap seats, like way up at the top. But I remember just one distinct moment when Derek Bugard absolutely just hammered a guy. Like, I, I, the clip's still on YouTube. I watched every once in a while just because I remember being there. All the games and you know I've been a part of playing in and then you know games I've gone to see. You know it's really a, a great venue and you know a lot of great hockey memories have you know been made there. So hopefully we can make one at the end of this year. Bessie and the Badgers get ready to play Penn State on Thursday. Head coach Mike Eves will join us next on the Badger Hockey Digest. The Badger Hockey Digest is brought to you by Charter Communications. Well, Mike, it's playoff time, and you've always talked about playing your best hockey in March, and it sure seems like your club is doing that right now. Well, we think so. We take a look at especially the last four games, uh, the 2-1 loss at home against Penn State and then winning the next night. Um, you know, those are two games that uh, we very easily could have won both. We won one. And then going to Minnesota uh, and, uh, you know, winning there on Friday and then having it 1-1 in the third and, you know, and then much to our demise, the referees got involved a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, we did a lot of good things. That second period on Saturday and up in, up in Mini, boy, we had some great, great looks at scoring. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, without the referees getting involved, we would have had a heck of a chance in the mm -hmm. third period. But we did a lot of great things. And you've been up there, Brian. You know, that's not an easy place yeah. to win. And uh, our young guys did a really good job. And uh, so to your point, when you started this question, is we are playing our best hockey. And I think we go up uh, to uh, St. Paul here. We know what our task is. It's, a, it's an arduous task. There's, there's no question about that to win three games and three nights. But as Schulze and uh, Eddie have told our young guys, we did it when we won the WCHA a few years back. So it can be done. It'll be really hard. But it can be done, and I think that's our focus right now. Yeah, back to that Minnesota series. Grant Bessie scored a couple of goals on Friday. A Minnesota-born kid doing it to the Gophers, something he's been doing here the last nine or ten meetings. He's been red hot against Minnesota. No, he does a nice job. Uh, you know, I remember playing as a player. There was always certain teams that I enjoyed playing against and because the results were there, and I can't tell you why. But uh, for Grant, uh, one of his favorite teams to play against is the Gophers. Yep. And Luke Cunnan had another good weekend, too, a couple of goals and an assist. And this week he was named to the Big Ten all-freshman team. He leads your squad in goals with 18, second best among rookies in the league and behind Kyle Connor of Michigan. But boy, Luke has really brought it on here of late, hasn't he? Well, I think he's been really consistent in the second half. Um, and I think once you've been through the first semester and you kind of know the league and you get used to your teammates and the coaching staff, he's really settled in and played at a high level. And uh, as we've said before, for a young guy, he's got a, an old soul. Uh, he's almost... Is like a veteran on this team mm -hmm. uh, in the way he prepares and and I think he makes people better around him. He rubs off on people because mm -hmm. he's very competitive, and and guys in the locker room see that. And we have other competitive people, so it just fuels everybody the fact that they they want to go out and win. So, you know, he's done a nice job, and uh, you know, going into this weekend here, we sure hopes that uh, he continues that. Yeah, I know we're focusing on this week, but a lot of people wonder about Luke. He's likely going to be a first round NHL draft pick. A lot of it depends on what team drafts him, what team selects him. But he said this week, there's a good chance he's coming back. That would bode well for the future. Oh, it would. It would be really exciting for us to have him back because, uh, you know, we only really lose three young men and, and two of them are defensemen and a senior goalie. So to have him come back and lead this group of young people back for a year uh, would, would be a big, big plus for our group. Yep. And also, as far as the Minnesota series is concerned, you play two big games on the road against a team that's trying to clinch the outright Big Ten championship. I would think that that would help going into the playoffs. You played in a couple of tense environments. Very intense environments and intimidating, especially yes. for a young group. 
So I, I think there are so many good things that happened this past weekend that are going to assist us as we move forward here in the Big Ten tournament. Yep, the Badgers take on Penn State in the Big Ten opener on Thursday in St. Paul. More about that matchup coming up in just a moment. Game night. That magical weekly gathering where lands are conquered and you get trapped in the dungeon that is your bedroom. But you've got blazing fast spectrum internet, so Kevin and his friends have enough bandwidth to play together, and you have enough left over to find a new apartment. Get 60 megabits of dragon slaying speed with spectrum internet. Where will it take you? This is Andrew Zielsdorf. He plays hockey. This is leukemia. It's bad business. This is Andrew's oncology team. They love Andrew. They don't like leukemia. And thanks to them, Andrew is now cancer free. Booyah. They are the world renowned physicians, scientists, and nurses at the American Family Children's Hospital, pioneers in pediatric cancer care. UW Health, remarkable. Well, the Wisconsin Badgers will try to do something this weekend that it did back in 2013 when it won three games in three days at the WCHA final faceoff and locked up an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Now, the Badgers, their record, not what it was that season, but Eddie Whitco, senior defenseman who was part of that 2013 team, says, why can't Wisconsin do it again? It's very realistic. I mean, people are going to say because of a record it's not realistic at all, but nobody in the, in the room has given up. Everyone knows what kind of team we can be. We've stuck and beat some of the best teams in the nation. We beat North Dakota when they were ranked number one. We beat Denver in a shootout. Um, it, we, I mean, you look back at our, our record, yeah, if you just look at our record, you could say no way, but you look at the scores and games that we've hung in and, and dominated at times, um, we all know that we can do it, and it is totally a realistic goal for us. Mike, you mentioned it in our first segment, too. You've done it before. Eddie Whitco, Kevin Scholes have been through this before. There are four other teams besides Wisconsin that need to win three games in three days. This should make for a very entertaining well, tournament. Everybody has great reason to, to want to win every game. There, there's no backdoor for the, for the teams other than perhaps Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, because of their record. So everybody's got to play at a high level. So it, it'll, it'll provide some really good entertainment for the people that watch these games. And, um, and, and again, we, we have done what we've asked our guys to do here in the second half, play our best hockey by the Big Ten tournament. We're doing that now, and we go in there. And, you know, you really do, when it comes down to one game, it's amazing, especially in college. You play one game and not a series, either team can win. You know, you just it, it depends on the day and who's playing well, the goaltender, and the fact that we just have to focus right now on winning Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then we have 24 hours to focus on winning the next game. So it kind of plays out pretty well. We play at 4 o'clock Thursday, 4 o'clock Friday, and if things go well, we play 7 o'clock on Saturday, so we have even more rest on Saturday. <laughs> right, right, right. That would be nice. Well, I, I have no plans for the weekend other than hockey, you know. Luke, Luke Strand and I were talking about the American Hockey League, mm -hmm. and many times they play three games in three nights right. in three different cities, and you're traveling, you're getting in at 3 in the morning. And it's amazing on that third game how well you play because you are tired. You play a lot more with the brain, you, you play more intelligent, you play smarter, whatever the term is you want, and, and you find out ways to win games. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, you can't put limits on the human body or the mind in terms of what they can manufacture, put in those situations. Luke and I have lived it by being in the American League and playing a lot of three games in three nights, and we know that it can be done. Yeah, one thing you have mentioned too that you'd like to see your team do better is play with the lead build off that lead yeah. and then win the game. Now, you've done that a couple of times here yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we, we've taken a couple steps yeah. in the right direction. And actually, there was actually clips on uh, Friday when we defended the lead that we sh we were able to show our guys, this is what we're talking about. See this posture? These are the things. So it was the first time that we had a bunch of clips that we could show our guys. So we are moving in that direction in terms of how to play with that lead. All right. Some interesting notes about Penn State. The Nittany Lions have lost eight of their last 13 games, four of their last five. Their number one goaltender, Eamon McAdam, has been pulled in each of the last three games. They've given up 14 goals in 99 minutes. So this is a team that can be had, and they've lost all-conference defenseman Vince Pedry to a season-ending knee injury. So they're banged up and strong struggling as you go in to play them on Thursday. You know, that's that's their lot that they're trying to yeah. deal with, and uh, we can't back off at all, but, you know, we, we just need to focus on what we're doing and, and go in, and we've got the, 
that one game on yeah. Thursday that we need to focus on. And again, if we can continue to build on what we we're doing out here on the ice, and uh, good things could happen for us. Good luck. Thank you very much. Sure, Brian. that's Badgers head coach Mike Eves. Wisconsin and Penn State Thursday face off at four o'clock. Then Saturday, a Friday, beg your pardon, against Michigan also at four o'clock. The championship game is Saturday at seven o'clock. You can watch all the Big Ten tournament games on the Big Ten Network. You can also listen to the Badgers on the Badger Sports Network. For Mike Eves, I'm Brian Posick. Thanks for watching the Badger Hockey Digest.